Hey there, welcome, this is Santi, and in this video I want to teach you how you can take this cluttered mess that happens when we use a lot of links in Obsidian to look a lot better, right? Because right now we're in edit mode, of course this is the mode where we can edit and add text, and by default Obsidian allows us to go to preview mode and then the links are a lot cleaner, but of course we can't add or manipulate the text from here, so today I'm going to teach you how to actually make this in edit mode look a lot better. So actually let me show you, this is the before, and now this is the after. Look at that, it looks so much better. And then when you put your mouse on any specific line, you get to see the link and you get to click on it, of course. But again, it's just so much better like before, like that, and after, like that. So it's, it's so much better. Now, in this video, I'm gonna go quite fast. I do assume that maybe you have a bit of knowledge on copying code. You don't have to write any code, but like copying code with a text editor and so on. If this still feels a bit daunting, if you're still in the beginning stages of Obsidian, I do recommend you check out my course, which in a very sneaky way I put in here. Let me open that. The course is really going to help you understand the fundamentals of Obsidian so that the learning experience is less overwhelming, less stressful. And yeah, if you know, you can definitely follow along in this video, but if you feel a bit stuck, I'm definitely going to talk a bit more about a particular lesson that I made in the course that is really going to help you with this particular video and achieving something like what we're trying to achieve today with this video, right? Now, another pro tip, if you find yourself copy pasting links like this manually a lot, or even having to just take the text and then add some you know, like markdown syntax into it, which is very tedious, Santi's website, you know, like that, then do check out another video where I taught you, where I teach how to use a shortcut with a browser extension to just paste anything from any website, right? Like this, you just do the shortcut and you paste it like that and it's just so much quicker. So I'm gonna leave a link to that video as well. Is this one right here where you get to see my face and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, do check it out, it might, it might be really helpful too. But with all of that said, let's learn how to make this crazy mess look a lot better, right? So by default, this is how things are. Now, in order to set up what we're going to set up, we're going to use CSS snippets, okay? So this is how we do it. We go to settings with control comma or command comma, depending on your computer. Then you scroll down to appearance and then you go all the way down here. Now, as you can see, I already have it there, but I'm just going to delete it just to walk you through the process. There we go. So if you haven't used this before, you will get this message that it says no CSS snippets found. And all we need to do is we need to navigate to the folder where we store the CSS snippet files, right? Which is in here. And if you know how to access this, you can do it manually. But what's cool is that Obsidian now has a nice folder that we can just click on and that will open the folder where we need to place the file that we're going to create. So we can click on it. That is going to open the folder that in here it says is Obsidian snippets, dot obsidian and snippets. And in this folder, you know, things might look slightly different, but just create a new file. You know, you can also do this from a text editor, which I'm going to show you in a second. But in here, you can just write anything. So I'm going to write shorter links. And then at the end, it doesn't matter what you name it, it's really up to you. What matters is that you name it at the end with dot CSS, right? Because that's going to allow obsidian to know that this is a CSS file, which is what it needs in order to work, right? So create that file and then open it with whatever text editor, either whatever your computer has by default, that will work. Or if you want to use something that is a bit better, I would recommend something like atom.io or VS Code. I'm going to use my default one right now, which is Doom Emacs. I really love this, but it can definitely feel a bit more daunting. It's definitely a bit more advanced. So use whatever you're comfortable with. Then what you need to do is copy the code that I'm going to leave in my website. So I'm going to leave a, a link in the description where you can access it and just go to the link and copy this code right here into whatever text editor that you're using, just like that. There we go. Let me just move this nicely here. And now we have the code we need. Now do keep in mind, I didn't originally create this code. I didn't share it initially. I actually found it from someone in the Obsidian community and I was trying to find it again, but I, I just couldn't. So if you know who shared this originally, that'd be awesome because I'd love to achieve it. And if you happen to be the person that did this, you're awesome. But either way, so some of the things that you can change is actually this little icon right here. Now, it's really up to you. That is the icon that I like. By default, I believe it was quite different, but I like that a lot. And you can also change the font size and you know, that's about it. So now make sure to save the file. 
and one that file has been saved and properly named, we can go back to Obsidian here in appearance, CSS snippets, and you will see that is not yet loaded. We still have it empty. So what we need to do is make sure that we re reload it, right? So we can just click on this button and that is going to reload everything. And now we're going to be able to see that down here, right? So now we can turn it on, exit out of here and it's working. If we go back to the settings, appearance and scroll the way down, we can turn it off and see how it changes. And yeah, that's how we control it. You can go on and off and on off and on off and on off. There you go. You get the point. <laughs> so yeah, now it's on and it's working perfectly, right? And yeah, there you go. That's it. Now do keep in mind again that if you found this a bit too complicated in my course, I actually cover, there's one particular lesson that is going to be extremely helpful. Let me scroll the way down is this one right here. There I actually teach you how to use a text editor that is a bit more user friendly and a bit of a easier method called Atom. And I just think it's amazing. I think it's the easiest way to really learn this kind of stuff. So if you want to understand what is behind the scenes, what's really going on, and you want to achieve more things like this, then do check out the course. I lay some of the fundamentals and I just make it a better experience learning Obsidian because it can definitely feel a bit daunting, right? So do check out the course if you get a chance. I also want to thank everyone that has gotten the course till this point. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to make the videos that I'm making. I wouldn't be able to spend my days in the ways that I do. So I'm super thankful. And if you're considering to get the course, I truly appreciate it. That is really the best way you can support my work, uh, help me make more videos like this, and just, you know, hopefully be helpful towards you. There we go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. See you soon.